the Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things that we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, and anything else that just catches our eye. I am Ven Stone. That is Joe Bryan. And over there, returning, as always, Pedro Mateus. How you doing, man? Hello. Welcome <laughs> back to the world of the living. That, that I was here last week. If you only watch uh, LWDW, yeah. you have no idea what's been going on. <laughs> <laughs> but so. yeah, no, I had to take a couple of weeks off from the um, Saturday shows because there, I had person staying over. And uh, due to the ungodly hours at which uh, LGC Weekly happens, mm -hmm. I figured, you know what, let's just let the dude sleep because he's moving. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> we'll do that. <laughs> That's his cover story. He's been up and not present because he's been waiting on this keyboard. Uh, not, not, not really, because, uh, yeah, no, uh, this one uh, came from AliExpress. It's a Aki KMG12, uh, and it was very, very cheap, and it came in very, very quickly, because apparently it was in the UK warehouse, so that, that was nice. It took like three days to get here, which is a first from anything that I've bought out of uh, AliExpress. <laughs> I, but do the interesting bit, I, I do have to ask, uh, what did you do to break your um, other keyboard? I used it for about seven years. <laughs> what about the other other keyboard? It was time. Uh, the, the others are still there. Oh. I'm just I just don't like them quite as much. I really like the red switches, the linear uh, actuation ones. I like them. I really like how they feel. I really like playing Vigi games with them. So I really mm -hmm. wanted me some red switches, and I, I got that previous one last time. But those were um, painted red, but they were clearly blue switches because they clicked. Like crazy. <laughs> so you got to respect the yeah. hustle on that last keyboard, though. Technically, you <laughs> couldn't catch them because they said it was red switches. You take off the caps, the switches were painted red. It was red, yes. <laughs> and then I started hitting the buttons, and Nori was like, You're not going to keep that keyboard, are you? Okay, fine. <laughs> oh. But yeah, it's. Uh, now, this one has uh, proper red switches. I've already replaced all of the um, keycaps, the ones that, you know, don't conform with the Portuguese layout. I've replaced them on this. And then I started looking uh, at software to make the RGBs because it has per key RGB. And first thing you do, LSUSB. According to LSUSB, <laughs> this is a Microdia dual mode camera, mm -hmm. 8006 VGA. Spying on you. <laughs> now i know i'm not you know the only one with this um with this particular controller reporting the keyboard as a camera because if you go look at the open rgb uh, issue tracker one of the like new device requests is for a completely different keyboard with the exact same name same exact product id same exact device id everything uh and the uh, there's a third one that i found on another website that's from uh new skill so yeah there's a bunch of keyboard out keyboards out there that are just sending it's like no i'm a microdia dual mode camera please give me things <laughs> how <laughs> what about you jill so you are back from your adventure to disneyland yeah, so me and Steve had a wonderful trip. We got to, got on lots of rides, and we actually saw an amazing light show with projections in in an area called the Grizzly Peak Forest of uh, Disney's California Adventure, and it was called Villains Grove. It was a special Halloween event, absolutely amazing with projections and light shows. It's it's Disney at their absolute best. It was it was magical, it's really incredible. And the weather was perfect, and we just, we had a great couple of days. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> I've been playing around with some things. In fact, I've made a new video about it. Welcome to Ven's Old Tech. Mm. There's a thing back here that I, I picked up. It's called a compeller, and I made a video. It is up right now on our Discord. If you go to the announcements tab, you can get a snack pic, and I'll post it up on the Patreon page this afternoon when I go to post this, if you want to take a look at it. Really curious piece of technology from the 80s that's uh, still in production today. They, they make a newer version of it. It's digital now, but it's analog auto gain control and um, works better than auto gain control does on any piece of software you've ever seen. 
That, that, that's not a very high bar, to be fair. It's not a high bar, but what got me very fascinated <laughs> is when I, you know, cracked the lid on it and looked into it. It's all analog. They, they were just doing this. They were just doing this with 80s wizardry and technical know-how. I mean, I assume it's from the 80s. It could be alien technology from Mel Mac, but I addressed that in the video. So, <laughs> give that a watch if you're interested in it. Um, I, I ran across this for like pennies on the dollar. I'm like, I, you know what? Let's just see what it does in like a home studio setup. But yeah, I, outside of that, I've also given our web zone speed enhancements. No, I, I sit down earlier this week and like, you know what? I'm paying Cloudflare for a bunch of fancy things that I don't really use. I need to figure out how to use them correctly. And it did. So uh, outside of like Sunday when LGC launched, that wasn't smooth. That wasn't smooth. We <laughs> learned things. But by that afternoon, I had everything podcast wise flowing from the correct channels and uh, search now works again. That was a Make sure you cut development mode on every now and then just to double check after you've changed some things. But <laughs> our, our web zone is being served um, on the edge, closer to wherever you're at right now. So that, that's <laughs> nice. pretty cool. And uh, hopefully nothing will catch on fire this afternoon. It's all to appease uh, all mighty goods. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't like our website being like not in the green on page feed insights. Let's see what we can do about this. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Yeah, no, I saw the screenshot you posted. It's like loading everything in under a second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I am sure it's on fire right now. Who knows? But <laughs> <laughs> something we normally don't talk about on this show uh, because we have an entire show dedicated to it is gaming. Linux, if you want to turn that uh go check that out. It's called Linux Gamecast. That's where you get this show. Uh, it's one of the things we do. But something so large happened that we need to at least give it a mention on Weekly Daily Wednesdays. And that mm -hmm. it's the Epic Online Services, the anti-cheat, the thing that is prevented and is like the last little hiccup that Valve was going to run into issues with, with their Steam Deck. Because if we need to explain, what are we talking about? I will roll this all the way back. We do have a Steam Deck coming out, and this is probably going to be the biggest boon for gaming on Linux ever. Because it's running yes. Linux. Everyone's excited about this. Now, it doesn't require developers to port their games from Windows to Linux. It's going to be taking advantage of a technology called Proton, which is based on one with some Valve stuff thrown in, but they got it right. You know, you hit a play button, it launches, it runs, it's going to be utilizing, you know, DK, what is it? DX, DXVK, VKD3D. Yeah, those VK. are two big ones. Right. Uh, that's been merged into DXVK now, so it's, it's all just the one. There you go. <laughs> and um, you're going to be able to play Windows titles on your Steam Deck or on your gaming PC at home under Linux. Reasonably fine. I mean, there's still some rough edges to hammer out. But if you were playing online games, especially online games that had easy anti-cheat enabled, uh, we ran into this issue IRL in real time with the Back for Blood when they released the uh, closed beta. It was fine. Mm -hmm. And we were running around, then they cut the EAC button. They they hit that. And we couldn't play anymore. Just, boop, we got kicked out. So this is going to fix situations like that and make it really easy for developers to go in Epic themselves have said, you click a checkbox. We don't have to worry about it. And I think that's really neat. I mean, we're, we're going to be seeing, and Battle Eye jumped in on top of this. Yeah. Yep. But they couldn't be left behind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, if you were looking at any kind of uh, Linux news uh, on Google, on DuckDuckGo, on Bing, whatever, you probably saw this and battle eye also going yeah we're doing that to you guys please don't 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 ignore us please thank you uh but it's good it's very good and it's well um it it, it might be more than just a click but uh as far as people on the the user end all this means for us is that eventually, if the developers decide to enable this, because it's not on by default, that's the big one. <laughs> uh, 
uh, if the, the developers decide to enable this, we'll be able to just click install and instead of just being, you know, stuck on the menu because you can join any kind of online activities, be it in Paladins or uh, Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet or Vermintide 2. It's, there's m- many, many different games that a lot of people want to play, which we haven't been able to. And this is mm-hmm. nice. It's the very first nice thing that I can say about Epic since Tim Sweeney started going downhill. <laughs> no. Aww. I mean, I, or since he sent money to Lutris. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, that was good too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gotta look at the good. You gotta look at the positive. And, you know, hey, my man Sweeney can be bought. Can be bought. He's demonstrated this on multiple occasions. And mm-hmm. yes, <laughs> he admitted to it in court. <laughs> Here's the yeah. thing. You know, this is just a win for everyone. Making this option available is going to help. Just everything is old. And you can say, hey, gaming helps drive other stuff and with other development. Which is also true. You know, maybe Valve had to cut a check to make this happen, but end result, mm-hmm. your Steam decks are going to be really nice, and you're going to be able to play extra things that you wouldn't have been able to before. And we were curious how this was going to play yeah. out because several months ago, like last month, maybe a month before that, Valve said everything's going to work, and we immediately thought, "What about EAC? This is the answer." You know, it's not. We're not. Mm-hmm not going to be working around the ac we're not going to be trying to buy because that's been a cat and mouse game that's been going on for years with wine development proton development right like hey we can play this game for a few minutes and it's gone yep this <laughs> this is going to be fixing it on the eac side so yeah now do you gotta wonder well though, this is yeah this is great because epic games you know they they do understand that this could be a lot of money for them and that that is saying a lot for how impressive the um, Steam Deck, you know, reception is with all the developers and all the companies. They know this is going to be a big thing, and that what I like to call the Gaben gear is going to go big. <laughs> I'm looking forward to mine in in Q1 of next year. <laughs> we will have to. Yeah, I put my thing yeah. down. So give me the Gabe gear. Gutter deposits. And that's yeah. something I've seen running around. <laughs> Especially on Reddit, and there's a bunch of threads being started of like, hey, let's go bug developer X to click that button. I understand and I feel yeah, you, the, the excitement button. and in the uh-huh. spirit of that. But I'm going to tell you, my brothers and sisters out there, the best way to show developers or to get them to click that button and offer support for it is to go buy the Gabe gear. Play it on your Gabe gear. Show mm-hmm. money Valve. talks. Yeah, exactly, where they can show <laughs> yeah. those numbers and put them up. I'm like, ooh. We want some of that cheddar too, which this got me thinking. Yeah. Now that EAC sorted, mm-hmm. you know, Proton's a thing. It's open source; they can use it. What do you think, Epic? Epic's going to look at the Gabe Gear and be like, you know, technically, there's nothing stopping the Epic Store from being on the Gabe Gear except us. Maybe except we should for change Epic. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that would be nice. That would be the ideal, like, uh, end game. Well, mid game. Uh, just have everyone else who has uh, dedicated clients, not Metalnet, Blizzard uh, right now can disappear off the face of the earth because they don't deserve anything. But yeah, the your Ubisoft, your the, which is not much better, um, EA, which not much better. You know what? Let's just stay with Steam. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the least worst of the option. <laughs> This, no matter what your thoughts or opinions, it's a very interesting time to sit back and mm-hmm. be able to watch. Very um, exciting. When it goes down, I mean, we've come a long way since like Loki Games showed up in the late nineties. I'm like, ooh, gaming oh, yeah. is here. <laughs> then we went through that. Then we had the full start with the uh, Steam machines that were just really early, and Valve had no business, and they they made some enemies <laughs> with that. Uh, but they burned a lot of bridges. <laughs> <laughs> But now they're doing it right with their collaborations with hardware and software developers. They're doing it's it themselves. making a huge difference. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I like even with that with the HTC Five, I'm like, well, let's just bring everything in house. And this is, you know, the Steam controller. They, the Steam. What was the little streamy thing called? Uh, the that one link link. Um, Steam link. Yes, the Steam link. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they, maybe they've learned some things, but. Yeah. That's enough mm-hmm. of our gaming stuff. Let's get right into uh this is this is just a weird one. 
Yeah, this one is just really, I was like, wow, this is actually kind of exciting. <laughs> so Canonical is extending support of Ubuntu 14.04 and 16.04 to 10 years from five years, like they did with the 18.04 and 20.04 LTSs. What? <laughs> and they, you know, they're bringing them back actually from the dead, literally, because Ubuntu 14.04 had hit end of life back in 2019 and Ubuntu 16.4 ended life earlier this year. And mm -hmm. so it turns out that a lot of businesses are still using these older, stale, yet stable versions of Ubuntu LTSs on their servers. So this is wonderful. Ubuntu 14.04 is being supported until April 2024, and Ubuntu 16.04 is now supported until April 2026. But there is a catch, but it's an easy one. <laughs> the revived support from Canonical is being delivered through extended support maintenance or their ESM service, not as a regular, not as regular repo updates. But as a desktop user, you can sign up to ESM and um, get a free account for up to three devices. So if you have some old hard drives around <laughs> with uh, 14. Uh, .04 or 16.04, uh, you'll be able to upgrade those. And I actually do. I have some some servers with some still hard drives in them. <laughs> so. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking about this. And the only thought immediately that comes to my mind and it's sticking around, it really is, is what company was the cause of this? Who, who looked at it and says, <laughs> yeah. um, hmm, you know what? It's going to be cheaper too. One of two things. You got some <laughs> hardware tied in. To, uh, and it's not been updated and that company's not going to update it. So you're stuck or it is uh, the cost of getting yeah. all these. And I'm, I don't want to say it, seats, it, but I'm thinking servers. But who's got that much rolling? <laughs> is it hardware or is it software? Because that, that was what I uh, poorly wrote in the show mm -hmm. notes there. My question was, what are they running? What software requires 1404 specifically? Because if... If you look back at 1404, that was still using Unity. <laughs> that was still during the uh, let's make Mirror a thing uh, officially from Canonical. Mirror is still a thing mm -hmm. for uh, Ubuntu Touch. And uh, you, the UB Ports team have been doing a much better job than Canonical did back in the day, but someone had to start it, so I'll give him that. Uh, the What is the software? What software? Now, the company is probably someone with a lot of money that went... We'll just pay them to keep supporting it. And Canonical went, okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, 1404 of all things. Huh. Yeah. You get to give can Canonical credit where credit's due on this one, though. I mean, extending it's that awesome. out to desktop yeah. and up to three devices. <laughs> well played. Well played. It's yeah. the same account that you, uh, if you have the live kernel patching enabled, you need to sign in with the Ubuntu account. You can use that very same account to do this. Yes. So... You like looking at gooey pictures of um, GPUs, Pedro. And um, <laughs> yes, Vulcan extensions. And <laughs> well, to be fair, the way you phrased it, that's all we're doing right now because no one can buy a new <laughs> GPU. <laughs> but if you did get a GPU, new or otherwise, it's new to you, and you want to see what it can do, what kind of extensions Vulkan, OpenGL, uh, what kind of video acceleration it can do, you want a GUI that'll give you everything tabbed out so you can easily see it at your own leisure, well, GPU viewer is probably something that you've already discovered if you were looking for it. Uh, version 1.35 uh, brings a couple of updates, uh, new memory heaps, um, displays uh the nvidia driver version now is correctly reported and some couple of extra things for vulcan and the aforementioned extensions i like um gpu viewer for two very specific reasons uh the size because if you look at the deb there it's 1.18 megabytes that that's it <laughs> it download it and it gives you everything that the video driver exposes about your GPU. It's there. And it gives you um, video acceleration information right there in its own tab. So if you install a distro, looking at you, Fedora, that doesn't come with the um, 
GPU acceleration bits mm. out of the box, you can just go there and go, oh, that's why it's not working properly. And then you just go look for them until that tab shows, hey, I got VDPAU or I have VAAPI. Very nice. That's... You forget yeah. the most important step, then <laughs> you go into the uh, Discord OBS support server and argue with people and tell them that it doesn't matter what the OpenGL version is and you should make it run anyway. Because <laughs> my stuff's too I've seen this multiple times. So <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I, my GPU can only do DirectX 5. So <laughs> that, that unfortunately has that happened work. with the frequency of like, oh, this one again. All right, let's see how this one goes out. Um very cool tool. Very yeah. cool tool. Uh, do you have any thoughts on it? You like looking at GUI GPUs, Joe. Yeah. So <laughs> I was really in, in, uh, impressed uh, impressed with GPU Viewer. We have talked about it before, but it's really nice mm -hmm. that they're, you know, fixing bugs and cleaning up code. And I just think it's really cool to be able to to view all my GPU in, info, you know, Vulkan, OpenCL, OpenGL, uh, video paw instead of having to look at them all individually in the command line it's just a really really nice utility mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, i've had it installed for a while since we talked about it <laughs> speaking of really nice utilities what do you think you just got top open you're like god ah, that's boring you crack open h top and you're like yeah this is fancy then somebody <laughs> else walks up and they're like son you don't even know how the real world deals with it check this out <laughs> <laughs> So guess what? This is not the first, not the second, but the th a third iteration of the popular Bash Top Linux Terminal Resource Monitor is actually in the works. It's called BTOP++. But this one is actually written in C++. So thus the BTOP++. And this is a version 1.0. Uh, but this revision is going to take some time to complete because of um, all the system information it has to be rewritten from scratch. And um, it's 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 coming along, though. Um, I've been using the second iteration, <laughs> BPyTop, <laughs> which is written in <laughs> Python and it works quite well. Stop that, Vin. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's so, what we're talking about. Yeah, it's yeah, I know. I just see it moving around. <laughs> so, but what's really awesome is BPyTop added mouse support, graphs for memory consumption, and is a lot faster and uses less CPU than BashTop. So, I'm looking forward to the progress on uh, BTOP. And uh, they said they're going to have by version 1.3.3. Zero, they're going to have support for GPU monitoring. So that will be a welcome that addition. That would be very for sure. Good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, the one that I, um, <laughs> the one question that this raises is why C and, you know, not Rust? Yeah. <laughs> why not uh, Rust? <laughs> yes, we need a Rust one. <laughs> Because not everybody needs to talk a toy programming language, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> but it's being integrated into the kernel. It's a real boy now, right? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they wanted something like, oh, what's the word? I'm fast? <laughs> that That is fair. Yeah, C++ yeah. is lower level, which, as Jill was saying, it is mm -hmm. probably the reason why it uses a lot less resources than uh, BTOP <laughs> did previously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's a bit flashy. I showed it on the screen for uh, audio listeners. And um, yeah, I mean, it's going to show your network stuff, your memory, your disk, and like its own little top thing. And it'll, it'll, it makes me terrified because I'm not sure exactly what it's tied into for the temp sensors on the thread ripper. But it's like, yeah, your thread ripper is at mm. ADC. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's still working. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's probably uh, oh, wow. K10 usually defaults to uh, TDI, which is the hottest spot. Okay. So it's not accurate. Not <laughs> but, sensors. But, but it's that <laughs> uniform number across all 24 threads. <laughs> yes, oh, because the, funny. it's just the one spot that it just gives mm. you all of them. <laughs> so there's your fair warning right there. Also. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'll argue with it saying it's running at 3 gigahertz when it's not. It's running at 2.7. Um. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> 
it, 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 <laughs> hey man, it, it's a very, very nice little application. It's easy. You don't have to compile anything. There's pre-compiled binaries. If you just want to get put it in, it's even got install and uninstall scripts. If you want to do that or just run it right out of the directory like I did just then to put it up on screen. Yeah. So, yeah. There's yeah. even uh, snaps. <laughs> so <laughs> there's just even a snap of it. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey man maybe you want to watch it like your resources increase on the beat down. <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe uh, you want yeah. to use a full gigabyte of ram just to run top uh, <laughs> here's the problem this is this has been a problem for new users on linux for a long time is like where's just like a super quick like search thing right something analogous mm -hmm. to like windows because hey if i get your windows laptop you bring it over and you're like i fix please I'm like maybe all right i'll try it but the first thing i'm doing is i'm doing a wildcard search for jpegs <laughs> and i'm going to find the most embarrassing compromising one of you and that's getting set as your background so that's gonna be the first thing <laughs> <you see. laughs> Now, I would like to simplify this task <laughs> on Linux laptop, laptops, you know, um, <laughs> just like peruse and like have my nice little displays of like, oh, those are, oh, maybe this one. An easy way to do that is, has been for a little while, F-Search, and it just works. And it's nice and gooey, too, for new users. Now, there's a CLI throw in for that, but if you just want something, throw it in. This is GTK3. It is brilliant. It is quick. It does exactly what it says on the 10 couple of new features in the latest version which is not point one can't recommend this enough uh, you do have to add you know it's just going to hit your home directory at first but you can add everything else that you want to uh search but it is fast after it does its little index which doesn't take long it is real time mm -hmm. like type type oh there it is found it which I, I look forward to the, well, here's the 11 ways to do this from Terminal. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that, there's a few. The one I usually gravitate towards is uh, sudo find forward slash pipe grep name of the file. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that, I will that's how I do it. I, I will argue that, that I could do it quicker with this. Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, yeah no, um, find Definitely. just goes through everything, especially if you just point it at the root directory, which yeah. if you're looking for something, probably. Yeah. You can even <laughs> enable run charge. Oh. Wildcards. Well, I think it's cool ahead, <laughs> that they added a, a file extension column. That is really, really cool because I, I want that when I'm doing my searches. And uh, one reason it might be faster... Uh, is that it has multi-threading support now. Woohoo! <laughs> so, That's a big one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh, man, look at this. Before I started working, I, I took a look at existing solutions. I, oh, here comes that bus. Uh, I tried Mate Search Tool, formerly GNOME Search Tool, Recoil, Crusader, mm -hmm. Located, uh, Space FM, Nautilus, Angry Search. I've checked that I out. I used to use Angry Search. <laughs> and uh, Long Catfish, time ago. <laughs> to find out whether it makes sense to improve those. However, they're not exactly what I was looking for. And again, this is a standalone application, too. Uh, See, like, performance, no dependencies on any desktop environment. QT5, it's GTK3, small memory, and uh, target audience, advanced users. But I would argue that uh, this is just a handy way to find something real quick. You know, when you don't need to bring the command line into the relationship, because you just need to find that one thing, you don't remember exactly where you put it. And the small memory footprint nice. is the big one here, because... As a KDE user, um, you may be familiar with Blue, the file indexer, and mm. you can set it if you just want to index a specific drive or if you want to index everything, if you want to index just the um, visible files or just the file titles, or if you want to index everything and the contents of everything. But if you do that and then you go and open um, your task... Um, your system monitor and you look at the RAM utilization like I did uh, two days ago mm. when there was a big KDE update um, and I saw oh the file indexer is taking up 2.3 gigabytes of RAM mm. now the Ooh. search admittedly the search in the menu uh, in KDE is pretty good it's very much Windows like in that respect that you just search for something and it gives you that and it also gives you 
extra options. Would you like to search for this instead? It it is that bit is very well done, but the amount of resources that Baloo uses is the reason that I disable it. First thing in every <laughs> install that I do, it's like, nope, you're not running. <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes you yeah. end up with the programs that will just uh, hang for no reason. Mm. I, I'm looking at you, Valdi, <laughs> on one tab, 100% for like, why are you doing this? Also guilty of that evolution. And I I will do mm. that when I hear a fan spin up and I'm not doing anything. I'm like, mm, it's <laughs> up here. What's using like 100% of one corner is always something. Oh, yeah. What were you going to say, John? <laughs> Oh, well, I'm uh, actually like Pedro. I use launchers a lot to do my searches. And there's a couple of really good ones out there for that. But um, F search, if I need to go really deep, I use F search. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, that used to be angry search for me. And now I just use the um, mm -hmm. command line bit that I mentioned earlier because it always finds the yeah. thing. It's like, ah, there always. it is. <laughs> it does work. <laughs> Yeah. And for me, most of the time, if I'm doing a search like that, it's because I'm arguing with um, a config file that can't find something that I know is on oh. the system, but man, I don't know where it installed that library. <laughs> so, yeah. Good to have. Good to have. What's OBS, Pedro? Oh, um, <laughs> it's, it's this weird, newfangled, gooey application that basically <laughs> translates everything that uh, FFmpeg does into a bunch of tick boxes and drop boxes and buttons. It's, uh, I hear it's really, really nice. I've never heard of it. I totally didn't use it to stream yesterday. We're totally not using it uh, from Ven's uh, box <laughs> to give this yeah. very show to you right now. N not at all. No, <laughs> never heard of it. But yeah, it, you know, joking aside, it, we've been using it for a long, long time and it's up to version 27.1 now. And it has proper YouTube integration. Like you can actually set the pre-stream stuff directly <laughs> from OBS, which is a kind of a godsend because when YouTube forced the new studio on people, which is awful this actually actively simplifies that whatever and you don't youtube need to loves key. me they forced me into it early <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was yeah. no that was like really eight bad. months before it went live for everyone they really liked yep. me <laughs> and yeah you can do it all you don't even need the stream key you can just sign in directly from uh obs which is nice it's really nice and there's a bunch of whale and fixes and yeah, no, this is a good release, especially if you're streaming on the tubes. G get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think that one, one of the things that was really cool is that they re-enabled drag and drop for scenes and sources on Linux. Because I noticed that um, in the last version that I couldn't do that. And <laughs> now you can't. Yeah, can't do that so. in the canvas. You can only <laughs> shift yeah. them around slightly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they added Control R on Linux to reload browser panels, like they did with uh, Mac OS and Windows. So that's cool. <laughs> Couple of things with that, yeah. Uh, the re-enable drag and drop that's been going for a while because uh, it it caused OBS to spike crash under Linux. There was some QT stuff that they had to get uh, sorted, and there's finally a fix for it, which is good. I get <laughs> maybe mm -hmm. I. I guess like drag and drop. I I just kind of line things up where I need it and I'm done with it. But yeah, that YouTube integration is kind of a big thing. And maybe you're thinking, Hey, I don't have YouTube integration. I just installed that. That's because it's kind of tied into the official, the correct way to get OBS is the PPA. That's the only place yep. they officially distribute mm -hmm. OBS. Everything else is like YOLO, figure it out yourself. So do keep that in mind. But yeah, having the chat doc uh, on YouTube for like public and unlisted broadcast, that's pretty deep. That's uh, read only right now, bandwidth testing, and the 18 scene multi view, which mm. is really good. Um, which, you know, you're streaming your game, you're not worried about it. But when I'm doing like program control, if I want to send multiple shots, so let's say Jill or Pedro can have an idea of the entire playing field being all the sources that I'm pulling from at the same time and be apprised. Uh, that's very handy to have that. So good work, OBS team. Very, very good work. Um, Pedro, I think you got to thank somebody too this week. I do. But before we do <laughs> For that, the we want to thank... the exact same reason you do. <laughs> we got to uh, 
throw over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's where you can support what we do, everything on our little network um, is financed by you. We want to thank you very much. We also have a store. Mm-hmm. If you want to put us all over your face, chest, and neck, that is the thing. You can get our Elksies. You can get faces. You can get the official, just the old WDW classic. We got stickers. We got mm-hmm. mugs. We got hoodies. We got more stickers and more t-shirts because, hey, winter's here. And unless you're in Australia, just in time for Australia. Ha ha. Summer's coming up. <laughs> t-shirts year round um we got a couple of bonus things that we throw in if you're able to kick us some coin you know we're asking like uh four quarters a week if you got that you're gonna get a bunch of things up to and including access to the discord that's where we hang out the other six days a week you can also get that by subscribing to us on twitch but we got an extra if you like this content this is the middle part i always say this get tired of hearing it but it's a real thing because i know me personally i like long form stuff to kind of listen to in the background and if you want some Linux tech related stuff, this this show is going to be about 45 minutes, but it's a 45 minute segment out of usually a two hour long stream that we also package up in a custom RSS feed for our patrons that you can just download. And because we're cool, allegedly, we make the video version available for you <laughs> as well, ad free. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody for that. Oh, right. <laughs> Stick around for your name in the credits, but. I had to thank a person that Pedro hopefully has a visual aid. <laughs> I do. This person. And I have. I, I gotta get it in. Gotta get it. Nice. Uh, game Mo. Yay. Tron. Now we can see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Game Matron was uh, very, very kind and apparently sent me and Ven the exact same okay, thing. Okay, I got questions uh, before we get into this. Do you, do you, do you just crib off my uh like purchase list i've had this for a few months uh, on my way (laughs) (laughs) it's been there i don't know who put it there first i saw it because i was looking for something big that could hold pcbs while i'm soldering uh and this one was very nice um i'll bring it out in a second first i gotta read the uh, the note i asked ven to be careful about not letting the neural interface take over frank so keep it away from exposed skeletons i guess from game matron Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, yes, if you watched the Saturday show, you already saw the thing. So cool. <laughs> Pancake maker. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's got all the little uh, crocodile clamps and the articulated stuffs with the magnifying glass with the uh, LED lights. So, yeah, and it also came with the uh, um, soldering iron cleaner bit. Which is very, very nice. And it, this is heavier than I thought. <laughs> Aww. Because when I uh, when I saw it on the... Um, I saw the listing. It's like, okay, so the base is probably metal. Everything else is plastic. That's hard plastic. When, once you start turning the uh, the little arms into, to, get, uh, to get them into position, the, they put up a fight. So... Um, yeah, no, thank you. Thank you very much, Gamatron. It's already uh, been put to use. I just keep the <laughs> bubble wrap on the magnifying glass to stop vape juice from accumulating on it. I did the, uh, I used it. I set it up, uh, but I had to create the cable Funny. for the a- XLR to AES cable for this AFAX uh, 270. I used that. Uh, thank you. It, it was a lot easier than dragging everything out awesome. to the garage and... Because I got a little metal one out there, then. But yeah, that's great, and it's. I could probably s- scare children at Halloween with it. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, it looks to me when I first saw it, it looks like a Medusa <laughs> clip holder. <laughs> mm-hmm. But Game of did send over a note, so I want to read that. Um, that I read on Saturday. Wrote in. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I want to know what you want this for, but for the love of Linus Torvalds. Don't let the neural interface take control of Frank from Game of Trump. So. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, no. Uh, you thank go, you Game very Tron. much. Very, very much. Uh, this is actually really nice. Thank you. <laughs> Pancakes are going to be awesome. Yes. <laughs> Skull claps. You know what? Oh, crocodile clips. Where did you come up with that? Are you, are you just against like alligator clips? Um, no, you said <laughs> crocodile clips. They're crocodile clips. Clamps. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, it was a direct translation from Portuguese because I don't think I ever brought that up in English. 
those types of uh, clips, clamps, just whatever just you want to call them. Mentioning alligators <laughs> custom to hit his microphone stand. <laughs> just say the sawtooth <laughs> clips. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of pancakes, maybe we could make diseased pizza. Crocodile clamps. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I guess that's supposed to be cherry. <laughs> uh, the, something the was blueberry. mashed in there. Yes, mm, no. uh, they tried to get clever with the um, <laughs> with the dough. Black poster. <laughs> this this is what happens when you go. Wait, that's all the dough we got. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> hey, let's get artistic. No one noticed. Everyone noticed. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Three point one four. But Joe, we got a. Interesting little thing yeah. uh, for our, our yeah. So boy. this this is a VGA output for the Arduino Game Boy hack, and which has actually a very small screen, and uh, this it's really really neat. And um, I watched the, the little video, and it 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 doesn't it's not very difficult to uh, install, which is really cool. So normally, you know, I play Game Boy games on emulators, but this is really nice um, if you've built your Arduino Game Boy <laughs> and, and want to look at it in a bigger screen, <laughs> this will come in handy. <laughs> I mean, if you got one, they've been out of stock for a minute, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, that's another thing. I know people have been trying to get a hold of them. <laughs> Last time I saw one was um, on Amazon and it was like 40 pounds. Uh, no, it's okay. <laughs> no. What are you going to do? Like um, breaking yeah. it up to VGA. Then you got to go find a VGA monitor. Hmm. Um, I have two. I've got <laughs> plenty of them for my vintage computers. I use VGA hookups for. <laughs> These are 1080p uh, IPS monitors that still have a single VGA connector, but I have two of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the business uh, uh, monitors do still. So you got to use, you got to play this at work. Mm hmm. Uh, at work, we've actually moved everything because everyone uses laptops. So uh, we've moved everything to DisplayPort, mm. uh, DisplayPort to mm. the docks, uh, Dell docks. And then uh, everyone just plugs their um, laptop in USB-C and away you go. I think I use like my VGA to DVI to HDMI <laughs> to DisplayPort. Yeah, I have those too. <laughs> they make Lots active ones that you can just convert uh, DV. Um, HDMI to uh, VGA and it has a little audio jack down the side for the audio out. Mm -hmm. We were talking about that. Um, I think it was Kyle Linux asked about converting uh, HDMI from DisplayPort. This works and you know, sending it through a splitter, but that can be dodgy. So I'm always mm. cable. The cable is going to play a big part on that one too. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. also going to come down to it. You'll get a display. It just might not be the exact one you want. <laughs> <laughs> the colors might be slightly off too. <laughs> Low <man>. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, Ven the the even the new Dell optiplexes come with a VGA port, and uh, for that yeah, reason, because people have old machines. Monitors. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but you know, if I'm, I am thinking like, okay, hey, what do people commonly have in their house? Laptops. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which, to be fair, uh, only two of those laptops don't have VGA outs, and one of them's a Chromebook. <laughs> Most of those laptops are old mm. enough to vote, Pedro. <laughs> well, that's the thing. The new, the newest uh, laptop that I have, which is that fifty four ninety five, mm -hmm. it has a VGA out the back. All right, <laughs> hang on. Let's just put the right qualifier on this. MacBooks. <laughs> MacBooks. Well, those only have Type C ports nowadays. They get Thunderbolt. Type C, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's the size of the hole. That doesn't tell you what's on the inside of it. Yeah, it's the connector. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Type C connector. <laughs> My new laptop it's all type has C both. nowadays, be it type USB C or Thunderbolt. Or... There's no confusion in that whatsoever either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Look, <laughs> USB being complicated, <laughs> let's look at USB 3, shall we? We have USB 3, USB 3.1, USB 3.2, USB 3.2 Type 1, USB 3.2 Type 2. Uh, they were going to release a Type 3, but then they decided let's not. And uh, supposedly it's going to be USB 4 now, which is also going to be backwards compatible to Thunderbolt 3. So, no, exactly, USB yeah. isn't... <laughs> and at the end of the day, it's the USB-C connector. <laughs> that can be USB <laughs> one on the other end it doesn't care yes no <laughs> <laughs> those four pins are still there so yeah <laughs> so Pedro, it's you, you drop this in our discord as a kind of a joke thing but i'm like hey you know what we can kind of it, it's probably going to be plugged into linux at some point Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> judging by the post that MT made Lee shortly thereafter, following the rules and not scrolling up to see that it had already been posted. Uh, yeah, the you may remember the April Fool's joke from a, a while back of the Stack Overflow Control-C, Control-V keyboard that just had the three keys. It's a thing now. You can buy it. It's that, That's literally... <laughs> A thing. They call it <laughs> the key. Uh, copy, paste, prosper. And they decided to embrace the joke and let's just go. <laughs> let's just sell it. It costs $29 and the um, it's uh, programmable. It, all the keys are programmable, all three of them. <laughs> but you can basically set them to do whatever you'd like. I love this. So, so if you don't want the code for me copy, button. Paste remaining that, that should be a feature you gotta pay for your copy pasta on stack <laughs> microtransactions to enable more copy pasta mm -hmm. <laughs> do you know how many people would sign up for an annual subscription are you serious i mean oh yeah no uh, that that would be a monetization thing that uh stack overflow look into it <laughs> But yeah, it is. Uh, it's on the store. You can find the link. Uh, they'll be in the show notes, and it's in the article. Uh, it's it, it it's the joke brought to life. That's yeah. very yeah, good. Definitely. Stack Overflow. <laughs> very good. You gotta think, like, at the end of the day, yes. I mean, my my first thought was like I could drag C and V over to my stream deck from BitFocus if I wanted. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're buying the joke you know i understand it yes like, hey, I got the thing. Like, it is a novelty thing and that's yeah. like hey i want the stack overflow things like no we got that at home and it's a breadboard with some old repurposed keys and wires <laughs> and all something like with the switches now build it yourself there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> earlier pedro and i were joking how many keys does it take to make a keyboard well apparently now three mm-hmm <laughs> And I, I had to walk in like Morpheus and I'm like, is it, is, if you only have one key, is it a button? <laughs> How low can we go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's going to do it for this show. If you want to get a hold to us, uh, you can head over to LinuxGameCast.com, the new super speedy version of it, and smash that contact button, mm -hmm. fam. Pick the show, LWDW. Drop us a hint, allegation, maybe something better left unsaid. Tell us about your buttons. We would love to hear about it. If you got a project coming up, that would be neat. You want to pop on the show if you're working on something uh, and talk about it. We're open to that idea as well. Just make sure you don't drop too many links in there. The spam golems is going to kick it out. But it'll let you know. It won't give any false illusions that, hey, that went through. No, no, no. It's Bam Golem's nasty. But there's also a link to the show email. You'll never guess what it is. Uh, we've cleverly disguised and uh, encrypted all of our email addresses. So they're completely unguessable by humans. Nope. Can't figure out, you know, mm. first name, athletics game. No. Nope. It will never happen. Not in the entire <laughs> history of this show. But we do love hearing from you. At Reply, everyone. Uh, all of our information for the Twitter and all the other fun stuff is on our web zone. So if you want to at reply Jill, or if you want to at reply Pedro, mm -hmm. or if you want to at reply me, it is doable. And um, me and Jill are even on the Mastodon at mass.linuxgamecast.com. Yeah. We're mm -hmm. hanging out there. What are you on the Mastodon, Jill? Um, uh, mast, uh, Jill underscore Linux girl at mass.linuxgamecast.com. Right. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> I'm just at Vin. I'm lazy. It's like you can easily find Vin throughout history on the internet. It's like because no one takes a Vin. Like, ah. 
And then they asking you, are you related to the diagram guy? No, I, no. I, I got a break. <laughs> Thanks, Goose. Because oh. somebody uh, started making a wine called Vinstone from like Stone Winery. And it was like the vet. right. <laughs> so I'm not the entirety of page one anymore. Okay, which I like I'm down with that. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. We're gonna roll some credits. Uh, thanks again for showing up, watching live after the fact. I got a credits button. Hit it. Yeah. Oh yes, and thank you, Inertia. Yes, OSS Summit right now is going on, and you can watch the keynotes for free. I do believe. Also, I, Kronos, I whatever Rube Goldberg <laughs> system you have in place to watch the conferences prevents people from watching the conferences. Uh. Yeah, I always have to wait for them to just put it on YouTube, YouTube because yeah, I'm what, not signing what is up, that? Whatever it is yeah. on Q and like I tried to do it for one. I just tapped out. I'm like, nope. Yep. I, the, the, I, it wasn't this year, but it was last year or the year before. It's like, okay, I'm going to watch the the conference live. Uh, no, I'm not. No, I'll, I'll just wait for it to show up on YouTube. I tried, yeah. and I just like, no, <laughs> F this. I'll watch it later. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, OSS summits are awesome. It was so fun. It's so fun to go to those in IRL. 